Hey guys, my name is Alec Reduker. I've been in the melee scene for about three years now, and I've been studying electrical engineering at MIT for two years. And I've always been really, really enamored with controller modding uh, and especially like dashback and snapback, that sort of thing, like on the electrical side. Um, so I decided to make an analog, totally controller side dashback fix, and it worked out really well. So analog, you know, means no microcontrollers. So I don't want anybody saying anything about microcontrollers. None of that's involved. It's just analog components. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. So in order to see what's going wrong and what we might be able to do about it, we're going to look at the uh, output of our joystick as if it were in an oscilloscope. It's fine if you don't know what that means. All you need to know for now is that the, the x-axis is time and the y-axis corresponds to the position of the joystick. I write vx because it's on the horizontal axis of the joystick and V is to represent the voltage from the potentiometer which is actually the electrical component that determines the position. So right here I'm going to designate a few areas of the y-axis, the first being the dead zone. Uh, any inputs in here will not register anything on the controller. The next is going to be the, the maximum input we can do which will be a one in software and the next two are the tilt tone tilt turn region and the smash turn region uh, for those of you that know anything about dashback uh, a tilt turn will turn our character very slowly and a smash turn will turn it very quickly the line that I'm drawing right now could potentially represent you flicking the stick to one side and then letting it go notice how it oscillates a little bit before it fully returns to neutral the controller will pull these inputs, meaning actually read what the uh, position is at each of these little tick marks that I marked out now. It does this 60 times every second. So it only matters where the joystick is exactly when the, the controller pulls for data, and I've marked those positions on our fake scope output. So now let's dissect this input and see what it would actually do to our character in-game. Each time the controller pulls is going to be a frame in-game. So our first pull is going to be at zero, so nothing will happen. But our second pull is going to be in the tilt turn region. So that will keep our character occupied for four frames, so none of the other inputs after that will matter. Notice that there are still some oscillations after this, but they're in the dead zone, so the game won't do anything with them. Now we're going to look at another potential input. Uh, this one we are going to mark in pink. And we're going to pretend that this input is Leffen smashing the stick as hard as he can, and he just got a new controller with a really tight spring, so the oscillations are going to be really quick too. So once again, uh, we're going to mark where the controller pulled the data, and then we're going to look at this input frame by frame like we did for the last one. Our first input is going to be nothing once again, but this time our second input is going to be a smash turn. Yay! Except, oh no, our third input is going to be a tilt turn on the other side. And that is undesirable for obvious reasons. This unwanted input on the snapback of the joystick is another issue that we have to deal with. Alright, so what would our ideal input look like then, uh, if there's something wrong with both of these? And the two, the two things are, one, we want to get rid of the oscillations. That's easy. Uh, the hard part is we want to maximize the rise time, meaning we want our input to be as fast as possible. Because any, any slope on our input means that there's a chance that uh, it'll register a tilt turn instead of a smash turn. So ideally, our input is going to just look like a little impulse, like I've drawn an orange right here. So now, when we look at it frame by frame, we just have a smash turn, and that's it. Perfect. Alright, so the goal of our circuit then is going to be 1. Minimize the rise time of our inputs, 
and secondarily get rid of unwanted inputs due to snapback of the joystick. So now let's think about how we're actually going to implement this into a circuit. There's a lot of considerations we have to make in order to keep it fair and to make sure it actually does what we want and is usable. So we're really trying to make the rise time so fast that we can almost just say that we're going to quantize the input. Uh, but we only want to do that to inputs that are already really fast because if we do it to all the inputs, you know, you couldn't do anything like tilts or walking. And those are really important parts of the game. To go along with that, we want to totally maintain all of our slow inputs so we can still do things like tilts and walking without any interruption. So if we actually accomplish all of this, th the mod shouldn't really be noticeable to the player at all. One last consideration, which is one of the most important, is that the mod shouldn't provide an unfair advantage over controllers that just have good dashback already. These controllers have a very, very rare potentiometer oddity that people will spend hundreds of dollars to find, and uh, this, this mod should more or less emulate it, but for a lot less money. So now knowing all the things we do, and with all the considerations we took into account, we're going to see if we can come up with some logic uh, that can tell us when we need to quantize the inputs. So our first condition is just going to be that we only want to quantize fast inputs, and we've already talked about why that is. Our next condition is that we have to be outside of the dead zone. This is partly because the game doesn't care about that region anyway, but also because there's a lot of high frequency noise in that area that could quantize unexpectedly. Next we need to be moving away from the neutral position. If we didn't have this condition, then we would get two quantizations, uh, one when we were rising and one when we were falling back down to neutral. On the scope, this would look like we had two impulses right next to each other. So once all of these conditions are met, then we're going to quantize our input immediately to either one or negative one. So one means the joystick all the way to the right, negative one would be the joystick all the way to the left. So now we're actually ready to implement this into an analog circuit, and we're going to judge these conditions with a combination of comparators and differentiators. Now that all of these conditions are met, we're going to use the output from this stage of the circuit as a select on a multiplexer. A multiplexer is a simple circuit that lets you select between different inputs based on the signal that you pass into the select pin. So in this case, the inputs that our multiplexer is going to choose from are the normal signal and then our quantized inputs, which are 1 and negative 1. So whenever all of these conditions are met, uh, it'll jump to the quantized inputs, and all of the other times it'll just pass through the normal signal from the potentiometer. So obviously there's a lot more going on behind the scenes here to actually make this a functioning circuit, but this video is more just to uh, you know, give you guys an idea of how the circuit works and get it into the community. I've actually already built this circuit and uh, tested it, and it works pretty darn well, and it's totally unnoticeable to the player. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know if you want to know more about this or if you have cool ideas for other controller mods. I'm all for it. Um, yeah, I was really didn't have a lot of expectations for this, but I'm just hoping to get into the conversation. And at the very least, it was a really fun project. So, bye.